Good morning. Happy Easter. Welcome to church. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, a special welcome if you are here uh, supporting someone who is being baptized today. Uh, we're really glad that you're here. And uh, if you are visiting us today because it's Easter, welcome. Happy Easter. If you're with us today because you're always here, welcome back. And it's really good to have you uh, with us. Isn't it great to celebrate Easter together? Let's remind ourselves. Uh, we do this every year, and every year we need to be reminded. So here's how this is going to work. I say, Jesus is risen. You say, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And you try and sound happy about it. Are you ready? Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That's a good practice. Okay, so that's what, that's what we're going to do in just a second. When I say, Jesus is risen. Wonderful. Perfect stuff. As we uh, begin our time together, hear these words from uh, Colossians. This is Colossians uh, chapter 1 from verse 15. Here's what uh, Scripture tells us, that Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead, so he is first in everything. For God, in all his fullness, was pleased to live in Christ, and through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. And get this. This includes you, who once were far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions, and yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single Isn't that great? You are holy and blameless as you stand before him because of what Christ has done on the cross. Why don't we stand if uh, we're able and we'll pray and then we will sing together. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. This celebration that uh, we don't serve a God who is dead but alive. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Lord, receive our praise, our thanks, and our worship today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God as the worship team comes.
he died on Calvary's cross and he rose on the third day. And as we hear with our hearts open, our minds reflecting on that moment, we just want to lift our hands and to worship the King of Kings.
may take a seat. Good morning, everybody. The reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28 from verse 1 and reading through the whole chapter. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy, and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. As the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priests what had happened. A meeting with the elders was called and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. They told the soldiers, you must say, Jesus' disciples came during the night while we were sleeping and they stole his body. If the governor hears about it, we'll stand up for you so you won't get in trouble. So the guards accepted the bribe and said what they were told to say. Their story spread widely among the Jews and they still tell it today. Then the 11 disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Thank you, Anna. I love Easter. Easter's great, isn't it? Huh? (laughs) Is it just me? Easter's great, isn't it? Because we serve. That's better. I was wondering where I'd come. Because we serve a, a living God and a powerful God and there's no greater reminder of the, uh, the living, powerful God that we serve than at the empty tomb on Easter Sunday morning. It's a great time. But Easter, along with Christmas, is one of those hard times of the year to preach as a pastor. It's easy to preach the first time. This is what, my eighth Easter here. (laughs) One person was glad. The eighth year preaching about the resurrection of Jesus. How can you do it different? You don't need to. Because God is still alive. And he is still powerful. And he is still the same. 
But today, as we celebrate Easter, we also celebrate with Hallie and with Portia and with James as they are baptised. And they will tell you in just a moment that Jesus is alive for them. And Jesus has been powerful for them. And forgive me for just a moment, because as, as, as we look to Scripture this morning, I want to speak to Hallie and to Portia. And I mean, you're welcome to listen in. But I want to speak to Hallie and to Portia and to James. You're welcome to listen in, or you can switch off, come back in about 10 minutes. As we look through this passage and their familiar words, we, uh, we remind ourselves of these words every year. Hopefully, we, uh, we read them outside of Easter as well, but that's a well-known story. But there's just four encouragements that I want to bring from these verses to Hallie and to Portia and to James and to anyone else that wants to listen. The first thing that I want us to see in these verses is from verse Eight. Because there's a whole lot to celebrate at Easter when we consider that we serve a God who is alive. He's not uh, distant. He's not dead. He's not just a, a God that we can relate to in some religious formula. Uh, he is a living God. And he is a powerful God. And, and the Bible says that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. There is a lot to celebrate at Easter Sunday. But there's a weird moment that, that I find in this, in this passage, verse 8. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were frightened, but also filled with great joy. They were frightened, but also filled with great joy. At Easter, we celebrate and we worship together with the joy of the Lord. But this story reminds us that there is also a place for the fear of the Lord. They were afraid, they were frightened, but also filled with great joy. I can understand that, being afraid. They'd just turned up to a tomb where they'd seen a dead body laid. A tomb that was sealed and guarded. They'd gone to anoint the body, but they were asking themselves, other gospel accounts tell us on the way, they were asking, how on earth are we going to get into the tomb? And when they got there, they found an open, empty tomb. They saw the angel of God. I'd be, I'd be scared. Easter Sunday reminds us that Jesus isn't just our buddy. He is the all-powerful living God who can break out of a sealed, guarded tomb. And there'll be some churches that you go to where they will emphasize heavily the fear of the Lord. And you can't do anything right. And you must do this and you must do that uh, because God will be angry with you and, and you need to be afraid of God. And there'll be some churches you go to which will uh, emphasize the joy of the Lord. Friends, you're saved. Jesus is your friend. You are blessed and you are favored. And it doesn't matter what you do. As long as you can say, oh, I'm blessed and favored, you can live how you like and God bless you. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. But friends, in this church, I want to point us to the Bible where we see the fear of the Lord and the joy of the Lord. We worship because he is a good God. He is a powerful God. He is a mighty God. He is a living God. Uh, he is a God who brings joy, but he is also a holy God. He is a God who has standards for our lives. He is a God who one day we will stand before and give an account. Hallie, Portia, James, as you set out on your Christian walk, may you grow in the joy of the Lord, but also the fear of the Lord. Here's what the Bible says about the fear of the Lord. 
Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? He requires only that you fear the Lord your God and live in a way that pleases him and love him and serve him with all your heart and soul. You see, that fear of the Lord that the Bible talks about isn't saying God is so scary and I can't, but it's recognizing that he is holy and I'm not. He is God and I'm not. Fear of the Lord is a positive thing. Elsewhere through Scripture, we see that there are rewards uh, when we keep that healthy reverence and and fear of the Lord. Here's, Here's what the Psalms say. Psalm 25, verse 14. That the Lord is a friend to those who fear him. He teaches them his covenant. Psalm 33, verse 18. The Lord watches over those who fear him, those who rely on his unfailing love. So he's your friend. He watches over you. Psalm 34, verse 7, the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all those who fear him. God is your friend. He watches over you. He will surround you and protect you. Uh, Same Psalm 34, verse 9, fear the Lord, for those who fear him will have all they need. You keep God in this place, you will never go without. Psalm 103, verse 7. No. Verse 17. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children. You keep God in this place, your children and your grandchildren will thank you. Psalm 111, verse 10. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. 112, verse 1, how joyful are those who fear the Lord. And last one, I promise, Proverbs 10, verse 27. Fear of the Lord lengthens one's life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. This isn't about being scared of God, but if you will keep in mind, yes, the joy of the Lord, but also that God is God and you are not, if you will keep that healthy reverence for him, you will be set. Second encouragement. Don't sell your soul. Look with me back in Matthew 28 from verse 11. And there's an interesting moment that I'd never really paid much attention to until this weekend. Let's pick up from verse 11. As the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priests what had happened. A meeting with the elders was called and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. They told the soldiers, you must say... Jesus' disciples came during the night while we were sleeping and they stole his body. And don't worry, if the governor hears about it, we'll stick up for you. You're not going to get in trouble. And so the guards accepted the bribe and said what they were told to say. Mm. Some of the guards went into the city. Which guards? The guards who had just been stationed at the tomb. The ones who had been sent to seal the tomb and to guard it. The ones who were there when the angel of God came down and bust open the tomb. The ones who uh, we're told at the beginning of Matthew chapter 28 in verse 4, the ones that shook with fear and fell into a, into a dead faint. The ones who we're told in the previous chapter, in Matthew chapter 27, when they saw Jesus die on the cross, the ones that said, surely he was the son of God. These guards had seen Jesus crucified. They recognized that there was something different about him, that this guy was the son of God. 
They were sent on a mission to make sure that nothing could happen to Jesus in the tomb. They sealed the tomb. They heavily guarded it. They saw the living God, the angel of the living God come down. These guys had an encounter with the living God. But for the sake of some money and an easy life, they turned their back on the evidence of their own eyes and ears In verse 15, we're told they they said whatever they were told to say. Isn't that sad? Hallie, Portia, James. You are unlikely to be bribed at any point to say that someone stole Jesus' body. But you are standing up here to commit publicly today to follow Jesus in a culture that is opposed to him. And you will come under pressure to think what society tells you to think. You will come under pressure to believe uh, what the culture around you tells you is the right thing to believe. But what does Jesus say? however much it might seem easy and less stress and more politically correct and, uh, and, and less controversial to, to think and believe what the world around you tells you to think and believe. What did Jesus say? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? When you commit today to follow Jesus, don't be bribed by the world around you to think what they want you to think. Third encouragement I want us to see uh, is a direct order from heaven. Look with me. Let's pick up from verse 18. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. We celebrate Jesus. We celebrate Easter even because Easter allows us to follow Jesus. The three of you in a second, as you are baptized, will declare publicly that you are a disciple, and we'll use those words, you are a disciple of Jesus. But look in verse 18, Jesus comes with a simple order, not a request, an order to his disciples straight from heaven with all the authority in heaven and on earth, make more disciples. Because the Jesus that you have met and decided to follow isn't just Jesus to you, he is good news for the world. The power of God that you have seen in your life isn't just for you to keep hold of, it is for people around you as well. And making disciples, telling people about Jesus, baptizing them, teaching them the Bible. That's not my job. That's your job. From from now. (laughs) Make disciples. And here's the last one. Verse 20, be sure of this. Because Sunday's great. But tomorrow is Monday morning. And Monday morning you go to work or you go to college and, and oh, there's, there's drama kicking off at home and someone winds you up on the bus and there's drama kicking off in the group, whatever it is. Sunday's great, Monday's coming, but be sure of this, verse 20, I am with you There are days when it is great to be a follower of Jesus. There are days when life is rough. There are days when you will think, what on earth was I doing? But the promise of Jesus, you know, shortly after he spoke these words, he was taken up into heaven, he's still there, he will come back at some point, but until then, we have the gift of his Holy Spirit, I am with you always. 
know that when you go from here, whatever you face as a follower of Jesus, he is with you always. Let's grow in the joy of the Lord and the fear of the Lord. Don't sell your soul. Go and make disciples and know that he is with you always. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Well, thank you for this uh, day of celebration and we pray that uh, you would give us joy as we worship you today, but also would you help us to keep you in your place to not take you for granted, to not uh, name you in name but live our own way. But Lord, keep in our minds that you are holy. You are God. You are King. You are Judge. And the only way we get to come close to you is by your goodness. Lord, I pray for each one of us, especially for Hallie and for Portia and for James, but but for every person in this church family, would you help us as we follow you in a culture that is far from you, keep us from selling our souls. Keep us from being bought by a bribe, uh, from being convinced that we should say or think or do just whatever people think we should. Lord, we don't want to opt for an easy life. We want to opt for a faithful life. Lord, straight off the back of your resurrection, you commanded your disciples to make disciples. Would you help each one of us to be disciples who will make disciples? We thank you for the places that you... uh, Place us during the week in our homes, in our schools, colleges, workplaces. Would you use us in those places to tell those around us the difference that you have made in our lives? And Lord, remind us today and remind us afresh every day, no matter where we are and what we face. And we know that there are so many in our church family right now who are uh, going through the mill. Thank you for that reminder that you are with us always. Holy Spirit, come near to us today and stay with us through the days ahead. In Jesus' name. Amen. Victoria, I'm going to skip the next one. Can everyone hear me now? Yes. yes. That's better. Um, so, as Dave has said, we're going to hear a bit of James, Hallie, and Portia's story this morning as we continue to celebrate with them. And as they declare publicly that they are children of God and they are disciples of God. So I'm going to ask James if you can come up. Yeah, I know you don't. You don't know. No one wants to come to us. <laughs> Usually there will be a video, but they've decided to speak to everyone. Thank you. Morning, church. Okay, so my journey started um, just before COVID and lockdown, um, which I'm sure everybody found it difficult at the time. Um, But for me, it made me realize that just praying on my own at home wasn't enough. And I needed a place to worship. Um, So I was brought to this congregation, this church. And the first time I came, I felt at home straight away. 
And so in saying that, yeah, I have to say that Jesus is my Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. to our congregation, James. Um, I'm gonna call either Portia or Halle to come up. Um, I am so excited for what God is doing in your lives. They're part of the Wednesday group and they're, they're, they're just barely young adults, I would say. And we, thank, we just thank God for your lives. We thank God for the testimonies that are coming and we are here for you. Um, Portia, do you wanna come up? concept of God or any higher power and I was brought up in a household where there was no talk of religion I had my first you can imagine I had my first sip of alcohol at five I mean so I heard of Jesus I've heard of Jesus like throughout my life like, as a child but I never I doubt his existence no one really had a conversation with me about him but through my early teens I started to engage in like, spirituality and other religions trying to find my identity and like meaning of life like as a teenager and the first time I truly acknowledged Jesus as a person was through Islam at 16 although now I know that that was a deception a year later I got into a relationship with a Christian that introduced me to the idea of Christ being God and after months of wrestling with that idea Christ revealed himself to me to dreams and people and the first major time was Walk, I was walking through Stratford and a man approached me with a piece of paper not knowing what the piece of paper was I took it and the man disappeared not saying a word and I turned it over and it happened to be the salvation prayer and after saying it I didn't expect anything to happen but I began to find myself being renewed by the Holy Spirit and I wasn't engaging in things I once identified with I used to identify with self-harm I thought that was a part of me I always thought suicidal I always thought that's just how I was um I, would, I used to call myself a very depressed person, even though that's not my identity. Um, alcoholism. I used to identify with that. Sorry. And it is, for I am certain that nothing can separate us from this, his love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor heavenly rulers or powers, neither the present nor the future, neither the world, neither the world above nor the world below. And there's nothing in all creation that will be able to separate us from the love of God. And that sticks out to me because through my life, um, my parents, I never really had great parents. I was... I was neglected most of my childhood, so I never really experienced love. So when it came to Christ, that's when I was seeking God, the thing that made me want to see God is wanting to be loved. So I think that's a very important verse to say right now because that's most of the reason why I found Christ, because I just wanted to be loved. And he is the only person that's ever, that I've felt that's loved me. The second question is... baptized I wanted to be baptized since I got saved but I've been putting it off and say I'm not being a true Christian I let my thoughts from the enemy hold, hold me back I felt that I was, wasn't a true Christian because I didn't grow up in that environment I didn't know anything about being a Christian all I knew was sin you could say I felt like a fraud but since I built up the church 
built up the courage of joining a church, which was not easy to do for me. I struggled with the idea for months because it was a fear of mine. I felt like I would, wouldn't fit in or I didn't look like this certain type of Christian. But my mindset has changed on baptism and I can recognize that I am a child of God and I deserve his love as much as everyone else. And I want to be baptized as a symbol of dying to sin and being raised to a new life in Christ. Amen. Amen. for Portia, but that is a powerful story. It's a powerful testament of God's love and God's reaching out to us. Hallie, are you going to top that? <laughs> no pressure. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you to my mom, first of all. I saw a man like just on the street praying. So just for like, just for the fun of it, I was like, okay, God, if you're there, just give me a sign. And another lady on the bus that hadn't seen the man praying outside the street had started praying as well. I thought, okay, that's a bit weird. If you're there again, give me another sign. And I listened to a very alternative type of music where Jesus is not mentioned at all whatsoever. And two songs in a row played mentioning Jesus. And this playlist was like four hours long, so the likelihoodness of that happening was zero. Um, I ignored it, being a stupid thing, it's a coincidence, and I went about my day. A few weeks after that, my dad got sick, and he was in the hospital um, with blood clots on his lungs. And one day he called me, and he was saying he was happy, and it sounded like a goodbye. So I was talking to my mum, she was very upset, and she was like, have you prayed yet? And I was like, mm, how's that going to help me, but I'll do it. The day after that, I was on the bus home. My dad called me, said, I'm okay. They figured out what's wrong with me, and I'll be fine. <laughs> so now I'm here. Um, yeah, I've always agreed with the Christian walls and stuff. I've always known that Jesus had the love for me because of my mum. So after all of that, I decided, well, it's time. You know, this is the path for me. So,
Hallie James, why don't you come join me? And uh, we want to give you a come, 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 come. Don't be shy. Well, hey. And but the trick is make sure you can see yourself on TV. There we go. <laughs> nice one. So we want to give you a certificate from today. Uh, Hallie, one for you. Portia, one for you. James, one for you. Uh, and let's pray for these guys uh, right now. Uh, feel free to perhaps stretch out a hand or whatever you are comfortable with, but let's pray right now. Holy Spirit, uh, would you come right now? Lord, thank you for uh, each of these people celeb- that we celebrate with today, for, for Hallie, for Portia, for James. Thank you for the way that you have moved so powerfully in their lives. 
Thank you for bringing them into this family right here. And Lord, we celebrate their declaration that they belong to you and want to follow you. Lord, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would fill each one of them right now. That you, by your power, would equip them to live uh, the life that you have for them. Would you build in them the joy of the Lord and the fear of the Lord? Would you use them to make new disciples? And would you stay near to them till the end of the age? Lord, in the days ahead that are, that are tricky, we pray that you would surround them, protect them, keep them close to you, and reveal to them your plan, your purpose, your calling on their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Praise God. Let's welcome. Has today been a good day? Yes. Good. Good, good, good. If you are new with us today, uh, I know there's a handful of you, so we won't do hands up and speeches, but hopefully, if you are with us today for the first time, uh, you hopefully will have been offered as you came in, I don't have one to show you, uh, but a booklet that looks a little bit like what Wendy's waving at the back. Uh, it says, welcome home on the front. If you are new with us today, if you're visiting, or if you've joined us fairly recently, uh, then as you leave, uh, Wendy will be by the back door with, with some booklets. Uh, do take one of those booklets as you go. They say, welcome home on the front. Those booklets will tell you just a little bit about the life of the church and what goes on here, what we're about. Uh, and we'd love to keep in touch with you. We'd love to welcome you back. If you're uh, here supporting someone that's been baptized and you normally attend a different church, then do take our, our blessings back to that church. But if you live locally and you don't yet have a church family to belong to, we want to say welcome home. Uh, and so do take one of those booklets, read a little bit about who we are. On the back of the book is a QR code. If you take your phone, you can scan it. Um, it will take you to our website. Alternatively, uh, scan the code behind me, head to our website. Uh, just fill in that form there. It doesn't, there's no marketing strategy, but I'd love to connect with you uh, in the coming week to, to say hi and welcome and see how we can, can walk with you. And we want to encourage you, keep coming back. It's been a busy week, isn't it? Uh, we've had the week of prayer uh, here at the church, and we were online at the start of the week, and then in, in church on Thursday and Friday, and again today. It's been a busy week. Um, things kind of go back to a more normal routine after today, but we want to encourage you, don't just come to church because it's Easter. Don't just come to church because someone you know is being baptized. We want to encourage you, keep connecting uh, with the church family. And we've got something great coming up that I want to encourage you to come back for. Next week, Tuesday, so not this coming Tuesday, but a week on Tuesday, uh, here in this church, we have uh, an incredible concert that is going on with the Watoto Children's Choir visiting from Uganda. Uh, and if you've seen these guys before, you will know they kill it. Uh, if you've not seen them before, come. Uh, it'll be here, 7 o'clock. Uh, right here in the church. You don't need to book, but it helps us to know who to expect. If you uh, head online to our website and, and fill in the form, it's free to come along. But even if you just turn up on the day, that's absolutely fine. There's flyers available in the entrance. Do take flyers as you go. One for your fridge and five for your neighbours. Uh, that would be great. And that's next Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Coming up this week, things are fairly quiet because we're on Easter holidays. And so uh, there is no, uh, there's no small groups running this week. Oh, but they're back next week. Um, there is no share this week or next week. Oh. Uh, but share will be back very soon. Um, but this time next Sunday, we are back in church normal time, 11 o'clock. Um, and in the evening, uh, from 5 o'clock, we have a fun night for our children and our young people. Uh, the, the children from Watoto will have arrived by then, and we've got some time on Sunday evening just to, uh, to hang out and play some games together. So if you are part of our children's church or our youth group, or if you're not but want to come along, come along next Sunday uh, from 5 o'clock. Uh, and finally, uh, our giving today, as always, thank you so much for your continued support. If you're able to give today, uh, we give as an act of worship. And you can give online, chingfakong.org.uk forward slash give or you can scan the code behind me if you would rather use uh, the giving envelopes that are available there in the entrance area, uh, and when you leave, just pop them in the, in the white box uh, that you see in the entrance area. But let's stand, and we want to uh, 
Easter's not done yet. We want to celebrate together just a little bit more, and then we will uh, we'll go. Who knows that's true, but he has done so much for us, praise God. Awesome. Feel free to hang around. There's teas, coffees, all sorts of goodies available at the back. Um, We're going to start getting the pool emptied, and some help with that would be wonderful. Otherwise, have an amazing week, uh, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you. Amen. Have a great day, and as you leave, grab one of these.